Sahel is a land of encounters, the end of one world and the beginning of another, the narrow belt that closes the gates of the desert and opens the heart of the savanna, which heralds the jungles of Africa. But even beyond geographic considerations, Sahel is an idea, an idea of survival, of men who fight every day to overcome the threshold of death awaiting them. Because this immense land of open plains and robust stony grounds is one of the severest geographies on the planet. Surviving in Sahel is an exercise anchored to life, an invitation to optimism, the palpable demonstration of being and existing, participation in the perverse game of living. It's just a question of talent. Sahel, the wounded frontier, beholds a handful of stories about these men and women who inhabit the Sahel Strip from the shores of the Atlantic Ocean in Mauritania to the shores of the Red Sea in the Gulf of Aden. They are stories about 21st century men and women who are struggling to overcome desertification and the slow abandoning of the nomadic life, who are resisting the disappearance of a world dominated by music, by genies who inhabit the depths of the rivers, by ancestral architectural forms, by art. A peculiar and sincere culture that is fading by the hand of modernity, a modernity that is approaching Sahel, like the rest of the planet, loaded with progress and confusion, of hope for the future, and of dreams that will most likely never come true. It's not a coincidence that Africa bears the name of a woman. According to United Nations statistics, 80% of productive labor on the continent lies in the hands of women. The intricate labyrinth of ethnic groups, languages, and crossbreeding are owed to the women who have kept them alive despite the difficulties. In Sahel, this statement has become a general rule. Madame Bamba is the most influential person in the traditional fish market in Nouakchott, Mauritania. She buys 90% of all the manta ray and shark that is caught in the country by traditional methods. The fishermen come to sell from all over, from as far as the Arguin Bank in the north. She salts the fish, dries it, and exports it in large shipments that she sends to Ghana once a month. Come work. Mama will... Salam alaikum. Come work. Come work. Salam alaikum. Wahai. My husband lives in Ghana. He's very old. He comes for a week, makes sure that everything is the way he likes it, and then he leaves again for three months. I take care of the business and the house. I like to watch television and listen to music from Ghana, but I don't have time to. This work is very tiring, and I get very, very worn out. In addition to receiving those who offer their merchandise in her drying room, Madame Bamba walks along the beach every morning in search of the best catches. Prices vary daily, and she negotiates in person. 80% of the jobs that come from the sea in Mauritania have their origin in traditional fishing. With her exports to Ghana, Madame Bamba alone creates work for 500 people. A 
Around her and the hundreds of women who work on the beach, a series of small interrelated jobs are being done that give life to this market. Yes, yes, we all work together, the women and the fishermen. When somebody needs help, the rest of us go and help. Before no one salted the fish here, I was the first person to do so, and I have taught everyone who now works with me. Another example of hard work and determination is Fanta Diallo, who has been working for two years in order to save enough money to pay for the expenses of her trip to France. She's a law student, and her dream is to study in Europe. Her family does not have a lot of money, and in order to pay for her studies, she trades between Bamako and Timbuktu. During the rainy season, the Niger River acquires the water level needed by the big barges to travel up and down regularly. During this time, which lasts about four months, Fanta makes between eight and ten trips, which at the end of the season should secure her enough money to cover her first expenses for her trip to France. She wants to finish college and return to her country in order to fight for women's rights in Mali. Women's rights? I wonder if women in Mali have rights. It is true that Mali has signed the international conventions in favor of equality between men and women, but honestly, the situation is different. In Mali, rights are created to suit men. They are the ones that have all the power, and women are behind them. They monopolize everything. That is where we really are. Aside from Fanta, there are hundreds of other women who travel the river daily. It's a common scene that has repeated itself on the Niger since man can remember. Women have taken care of the small trade business, buying here and selling there on a traveling merry-go-round up and down the river. Independent women travel with merchandise and children, surviving with everything on their backs in a non-stop nomadic lifestyle. <laughs> 